show. Well, right now, Congressman Dave Riker joins us live on the phone from Washington, D.C., with more on his thoughts about the president's State of the Union. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning. I want to get your reaction to last night's speech. Okay. <laughs> uh, it was long. <laughs> that was uh, one of my first impressions. But I thought that uh, uh, he covered a lot of ground. Uh, I think he talked about too many things, and it was hard um, uh, at least I think, anyway, to focus on really what, what was he trying to say. And I think he should have really had a speech that focused entirely on the economy and jobs because that is the number one issue. But we went from Afghanistan to Iraq to, to earmarks to transparency to, to the recent Supreme Court ruling to uh, you name it. We talked about it. Uh, but I did appreciate the fact that uh, I think most Americans wanted to know, does the president really understand what's going out going on out there in real America. And he did recognize that there are families that are struggling out there that have lost their jobs, and they need to get uh, back to work so they can provide for their families. And uh, and so I come from a family like that, and I can, I can understand how you know, families are sitting at home at their dinner table at night wondering where their next meal is going to come from, how are they going to pay for their uh, mortgages and their, and, their, and their car payments. So... Um, I, you know, it, uh, I think that he could have focused a little bit more on trade. I think the message on trade was a little bit confusing. Uh, we're going to um, uh, increase our exports, but he didn't really say how. And then he did come back to uh, the trade agreements that uh, have been pending for over a, well, over a year now. The, the Korean agreement, Colombian agreement, the Panama agreement are all agreements that have been made that could be brought to the floor, could have been brought to the floor this entire year that have not yet uh, even been entertained as as a possible vote on the on the house floor and it's absolutely critical that uh, the united states become engaged uh, with the rest of the world because we are getting left behind and especially for washington state one out of every three jobs is connected to trade. So it's absolutely key to our success in getting this economy back on track. So, Congressman, let me jump in if I could here. Um, let me ask you, based on what you know of the president's plan to create jobs, because clearly the first half hour of the speech last night was about jobs and creating jobs, would you suggest anything different than what the president is suggesting to try to stimulate job growth in America? Well, uh, I think that first of all, yes, I think more uh, emphasis needs to be made on the small businesses that uh, provide 85 percent of our jobs in Washington state. And uh, yes, he did make some comments about giving some incentives to small businesses, but we need to do more. We need to uh, provide those incentives to small businesses, tax credits to small businesses. Um, and, and the other thing that he did mention that uh, may create jobs uh, in his mind and uh, focused on energy and providing uh, credits and incentives to businesses that produce energy-saving uh, products. But I dropped a bill uh, last month that actually focuses on the consumer, and the consumer gets the uh, tax advantage, gets the tax credit, and they decide uh, what, they, what they need at home, whether it's storm windows and insulation. Then they can go to the product uh, creator, the, the company that makes the product, and and and, uh, and and make the order, which creates jobs uh, and gives the American family the freedom to choose what they need rather than the other way around. And it's a long-term solution. It lowers energy costs for American families and also creates jobs. So uh, that's just one of the, the differences uh, that I that I think that I would uh, point out. But uh, uh, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, what I hope happens is that the rhetoric from the speech last last night matches. Uh, now the action that we're all going to be waiting to see in, in the coming months. I just wanted to ask you one final thing. I watched the speech last night, Congressman, with my 13-year-old, and he turned to me at one point and he said, Dad, how come Republicans and Democrats always try to make each other look bad? And I want to ask that question. I know it sounds like a really simple question, but that hit on what you were talking about right there. What would you say to a 13-year-old who asked you that? Well, um, <laughs> uh, what I would say is, look, you need to vote, son, you know, when you're... Uh, uh, 18, you need to vote for people that you think are going to go back and work together, because that's what Americans want. They, they this bipartisan stuff has got to stop. Um, I, you know, from my previous career in, in law enforcement, I always had a team. We always worked together, and we always found a solution and a resolution to the problem. The only way that we're going to move forward uh, in this country is for the Democrats and Republicans 
to get down to business, to work together and stop this bipartisan uh, politics. And, you know, sad to say that the president did play some of that last night during his speech. I think that uh, part of what he said actually created some divisiveness. I don't know how you can poke somebody in the eye and then at the same time say, let's be friends. Uh, we need to uh, we need to get past all of that. We need to get past looking in the past. We need to look toward the future and really, truly get down to work to help the American people get back to work. Congressman Dave Riker, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, thanks. We'll let you get back.